Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening, y'all. Welcome to um, Beyond Bible Basics tonight. If this is your first time with us, I am Apostle Mylon Carter, the founding and visionary of the Place of Transformation, aka the Pot Church. Y'all come in, come in tonight. Come in, come in, come in, come in. I want y'all to come in. I want you to share. I'm going to go ahead and tag a few people, do a few tags of my own on tonight. Let me see if I can get there, if I can do this the right way. Let me go to my main page. And while y'all are coming in, I want you to share. I want you to tag and share, please. Tag and share, please, sir. Please, ma'am, tag and share. We're going to take about a few, just a few minutes to get a couple of people in. Let me get to the live on Facebook here. To get a couple of people in, and then we're going to go from there. Here we go. All right. So I want you to, y'all come in a little bit, come in. Let's go down here. Share, share public, share to my story. All right. You know, come in, please, ma'am. Please, sir, come in. Please, sir, please, ma'am, thank you. <clears throat> Y'all come in, come in. When you come in, say hello. I need you to like, comment, and share. Please, I need you to say hello, like, comment, and share, please. Um, I'm gonna begin the live as soon as I get um, get about um, five or six people in here. We're gonna get me to go to live. We have a word tonight from the Lord. A word from the Lord tonight, y'all. A word from the Lord tonight. I don't want to be here long with a lot of preliminaries and things of that nature, but I want to share with you what God gave me tonight. I want to share with you what God gave me tonight. Um, please, sir, please, ma'am, I want to share with you what God gave me tonight. Y'all come in, say hello. Please come in, say hello. I need you to tag. I need you to comment, share, and tag. Please, sir, please, ma'am, thank you. I need you to tag, share, comment. If you can, if you will, y'all come in. Just say hello so that I know that you are here, okay? I know that you are here. I have an amazing word tonight from the Lord, a very deep and a very powerful word tonight. Um, from the Lord. I, I'm, I'm going to get straight to what God says. I'm going to get about five people in here tonight. Get about five of you in here. And we're going to go straight to the word of the Lord on tonight. Um, pull up my scripture here. Thank you for sharing. I see someone that has. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Those of you who have shared tonight, thank you so much for sharing. Sharing is caring. And I appreciate you. <clears throat> I may be sipping on my tea a little bit tonight. I do, I'm hoarse just a little bit, but that does not stop the assignment. Oh, yeah. That does not stop the assignment that God is giving us. Um, we're going to obey God still. Amen. Um, we understand why. We're hoarse. Because I understand. All right. I'm going to pull up a couple of scriptures here that I want you to um, to share with you. Y'all come in, say hello. Say hello, say hello, hello. Come on, come on in. Listen, I need you guys to come all the way in, okay? Come into the live. That way our algorithm our algorithm can, can build. Um, don't view from the window only um, because you don't want anybody to see your comments or whatever your reason are. I need you to come all the way in so that I can be able to properly build algorithm. And so that when I go live, I will be able to attract more of an audience. So to all of you that that, that have a spectating spirit tonight, I need you to, to be loosed. Uh -huh. I need you to be loosed. Um, I need you to be, be loosed um, in Jesus' name. And I come in freedom to your mind and your spirit um, in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah, I ain't come to play tonight, y'all. Uh, but I need y'all to come all the way into the live. Please, sir. Please, ma'am. Hey, love. Hey, 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 my sis, how are you? 
y'all that y'all y'all that are coming in and viewing and from the window and not coming all the way in come all the way in i bind the spirit of expectation i bind i bind the the, the, the hand of the, the function of the enemy in jesus name i bind the works of the enemy in jesus name i come against every spell every cauldron every incantation every witch and warlock every 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 um every assigned spirit every spying spirit I counsel you in Jesus' name. Every spirit that's been assigned to go back and take back to the sender of the witch, I command the spell to be flipped back to the witch. I command the cauldron to be turned back over in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. I cancel it in Jesus' name. I come against every spectator. Everybody, that, everybody, every spirit that's been assigned to come into my territory. Shut up. And been trying to come and grab my spoil. Tonight, I cancel it in Jesus' name. I come against the spirit of Ziglag. Mm. Uh, I come against the spirit of Ziglag in Jesus' name. I decree and declare tonight that no no weapon that's formed against the people of God, my the people, everyone that's attached to me, be it friend, be it friend, family, by 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 none blood or blood association. I cancel it in Jesus' name. I see you. Yeah. Every spirit of disguise and demise, I come against you in Jesus' name. I didn't come to play tonight. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you by the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost. Loose your hold now. Mm. Yeah, bye. I come against you now. Every spirit, ah, yeah, the Every spirit that sits on the borders, mm, yeah, that sits on the borders and cracks and crevices, it showing. I come against it now in Jesus' name. Mm. You, mm. Every, every, every high thing that exalts itself above God. Yeah. If those that can't decide whether they want to be friend or foe, I come against the spirit of confusion in Jesus' name. I come against it in Jesus' name. Loose your hope. It's in Jesus' name. I cancel you now. Your work, I come against the work of the enemy. Yeah, I come against the hand of the enemy. I come against the brewing of the enemy. Hmm. Those that have decided to come against me. Yeah. And with your mouths, I, I pray mercy for your soul. I pray mercy for you. Hmm. Uh, I hear it tonight, Shay. I pray against it tonight in Jesus' name. Uh, those that they show you that can't make up their mind, whether you're friend or foe, I come against confusion tonight. Yeah, I'm a little horseman, I promise you. It's not gonna stop me. I'm still gonna give all I got. Those who have hidden agendas. I come against it in Jesus' name. O Baba Bashaya, Yeteta Tabandia, Leba Baba Sota Baba Shaya, O Baba Bandora Bahikaya, in Jesus' name. Oh God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's go to work. 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 Greetings, Apostle. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. Shatababansu. Oh, I felt that thing so strong. Shadabandaya. The Lord began to show me in prayer on tonight where the enemy, where they were at, there were enemies. And you know, you can say what you want, but I don't miss God. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, glory to God. Where the enemy began to sit on the cracks and crevices, begin to sit on cracks and crevices and try to hide places, try to hide holes. Glory to God. They began to show me, they began to show me, Shay, that. He began to show me how how there were people who were sitting up waiting for my demise. And in the spirit, while I was in prayer, Elijah, bless you, brother. As I was in prayer, the Lord began to tell me, he said, I'm going to give you a minute to go back and look at your enemy. Just for a minute, watch this. He told me, he said, to go back and look at your enemy and tell your enemy, you tried, but you lost. Woo! I hope God let me preach that. I want to preach that. You tried, but you lost. Mm. I'm here to tell you that. I'm in my comeback. I don't know who, who I need to tell you this to, but I'm giving it to the priest for God. Give me in a minute. I'm here to tell you tonight that you're in your comeback. Mm. You were set up for such a time as this. Yeah, I was giving it to the priest that tonight, and God told me to go go to this message and begin to begin to deal with me about this particular message we have tonight. Huh. But God told me to tell you tonight, brother, sister, you're in your comeback. It was a setup. Huh. It was a setup. Watch this. To, to set you back. It was a setup to set you back. Mm. But I hear Holy Ghost saying, what was meant to set you back is literally about to set you up. Yee! Glory to God. Mm. 
Oh my God. It was a setup to set you back. But was meant to what was meant to set you back. I hear God saying, it's really about to set you up. You thought they 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 counted you out. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. They counted you out. They counted you out. Mm -hmm. But I hear God tonight saying, huh? I heard the Lord say, they counted you out. Mm -hmm. I put a post on TikTok. What's up, sis? Put a post on TikTok the other day. There was so many that counted me out. Huh? But I'm going to tell you, those that counted you out could not count. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. God told me to tell you tonight. You were set up. You, the enemy set you up to set you back. Watch this. He was intended to set you up and set you back to set you away, huh? to put you away. But what, what, what they didn't understand, what the enemy meant for evil, huh? go. God turn into good. I'm a, I'm a preacher until I ain't got no voice. It don't matter. Glory to God. God turn into good tonight. Hallelujah. 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 And God told me, and I was praying. I was praying, and God began to tell me, this is plain as day. He said, I began to see where spirits were sitting on holes. Watch this. They were sitting on open spaces that were left around me by my adversary. Mm. They were sitting on open spaces. It's this ain't even a message, y'all. But God began to show me how spirits, I was praying. I was in prayer today and um, in, uh, later on, um, earlier today, and even today. Where well, I begin to see what spirits Elijah was sitting on the was sitting on crack trying to hide them. You wonder why you suddenly getting sick? Can I talk to you tonight? You wonder why you suddenly feeling some kind of way? You were feeling fine yesterday, then the day you get up and you all messed up. I'm gonna tell you that the enemy is sitting on sitting on open places. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. The enemy's been sitting on open places. Prince Milan, God told me to tell you tonight that what the enemy was sitting on has been exposed. Show right what the enemy's been sitting on has been exposed. And those places that were open around you, the way your where your stuff was seeping out, where your joy was seeping out, where your peace was seeping out, where your oh God, where your esteem was speaking was seeping out. God said tonight to tell you it's been exposed and covered. Shut up. Preach smiling. So tabai. Glory to God. Mm, mm, mm. That they said on me some kind of way. And I begin to, I heard God just as clear as day. And he said to me, he said, now that he's been exposed and covered. What watch this? What was behind the hole? Huh? Trying to seep away from you. What has been what had been, been eased up inside of these spaces. I begin to right away to think about a mouse, a mouse. As the mouse begins to get food or, or cheese or whatever it was going, whatever was going on. And they had to begin to slowly put pieces in the hole huh, to go back and eat it later. Mm. Immediately I thought about David coming back to find the find that, that the Amalekites had invaded Ziglag. <laughs> Glory to God. And I began to pray. And I began to say, God, what are you showing me? Holy Ghost said to me tonight, he said, I'm here to tell you that the Amalekites have been exposing your life. The only difference between David and the Amalekites that was in his life, watch this. The Amalekites took David's stuff and they killed it. And they had to go get back after death. But I'm going to tell you that you prevented death. Woo. You prevented death. Can I preach that? Can I tell you what I feel tonight? God told me to tell you, you prevented death. It was your praise that prevented death. It was your your position of prayer that prevented death. When you didn't understand what God was doing, when you didn't like it necessary, God said it was your position that prevented death. Yeah, yes, shot the bandoskaya. So I'm right now. Before I get into this, mm, yeah, how about yeah. I need some of y'all. I need y'all to put in the com in the comments. My praise prevented death. Ooh, my praise. But listen, that last thing should have took you out from the inside out. Should have took your mind away. Should have took. Should have had you thinking yourself crazy. You should have died in your last situation. That last relationship should have killed you. You should. You should have died a slow death, an instant death, an immediate death. Oh my God! But God told me to tell you tonight to tell you. My praise prevented death. 
Parabababansaya. My praise prevented death. I'm going to Facebook myself. Yes, shut up. I'm going to Facebook myself. It's amazing to me. I folk get in my inbox right now. And, and listen, they show you they don't call you. They don't come by until they want something. They, it's amazing to me. They, they, they can come and check on, check in my business, but can't check my page to see what's going on and want to get them on and have a conversation. I bind the devil. I bind the hand of the devil. Loose your hold. Mm. I done had enough. I done had enough. I done had enough. Oh, Baba Shatarabansaya. Yeah, Baba Bandurabasaya. My praise prevented death. Woo! It should have killed you, Shay. Mm -hmm. Gloria, it should have killed you. You weren't supposed to make it out of that. Mm -hmm. Elijah, it should have drove you crazy, bro. Huh? Tina, it should have took you out. Huh? But I'm here to tell you, God said tonight, huh? your praise. Uh, got, the scripture says uh, that our praise got to the very jaw of the enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, I even got to the message yet. Huh? But I felt God say that thing tonight. Yeah, by Rabbi my praise, but it was what you put in. Uh -huh, glory to God. Oh, 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 church, oh, Baptist church used to say, we were sitting up timber. It was what you put up in advance before the trial. It was to praise God because you didn't know what you were praising for. It was that moment you were in the service, that moment you were in the presence of God, and you don't know what happened. A praise just came on you, that long, you, and you couldn't contain yourself. It was that moment, you shot. It was that moment. It was that moment of praise that you could contain yourself. Glory to God. God said what you did tonight, what you did in that moment, you stored up the praise in advance. It was because your position of your position, was always praise uh, because your position uh, was always prayer. Sheba Statai. Woo, glory to God. My God. My God. Let me. I'm trying to I'm trying to add to, to add to add to, to their comments. My God. Yesha. Rebaban Saya. I need y'all to tell your friends. There's somebody you know by name. Yeah, glory to God. There's somebody you know by name that needs to be in here. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Glory to God. You need to tell them tonight. Listen, you need to get here tonight. You know, my God. I, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Had to be a part of the uh, of the remnant. Oh, my God. I'm here to tell you tonight. Mm, mm. You need to tell somebody. There's somebody you know. Hey, hey, sis. Hey, bro. You ain't doing nothing right now. And even if you're if you could stop for a second, God got a word tonight. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. We're going to the word of the Lord. We're going to book up the book of Isaiah, hmm. the book of Isaiah, chapter twenty-nine. I'm going to read two verses tonight. Then I have a few few verses within. Oh, I have a few verses tonight. Glory to God that I'm going to read, and then I'm going to go straight to the word. Hallelujah. Been sick, but God is a healer. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 13. And it reads, let me get let me get the version right. I don't want to read, I don't want to read the King James Version. I'm gonna read, I don't read, I don't want to read the international version, new international version. I want to read the King James Version. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all give me a minute here so I can find what I'm looking for, where I'm looking for it at. Amen. All right, here we go. Verse 13 says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as, oh Jesus, come out of here. For as much as, look, all this, these issues that I didn't have. Let me plug up my computer so I won't lose I won't lose my uh, my note shop. All right. For 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 the Lord said, for as much as the people draw near with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but you have removed. Hmm, let me let me let me start that again. This is Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen. Scripture says, "Wherefore saith the Lord, for as much as the people draw near with their mouth." And the lips do honor me, but he has removed their heart far from me. And their fear toward me is taught by precept of man. What? Wait a minute. Let me read that again. Wherefore, 
the Lord says, for as much as the people draw near with their mouths and with their lips do not honor me. My, my bad. And with their lips do honor me. They draw near me with their mouths, but yet remove their hearts far from me. Their fear toward me is taught by precepts of men. Mm -hmm. I saw that tonight. And I said, God telling me like somebody saying one thing and doing another. And he said, don't talk too quick, too soon, son. He said, go to Jeremiah. I'm going to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23. I'm going to read just one verse there as well. It said, woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Now, you know, we like to try to say the Bible says something that they really say, try to interpret something that they really. So let me read that again. I'm going to go to the Message Bible. I want you to see what it says in the Message Bible. It's my, one of my favorite versions of the Bible. This is verse 23 and 1. And it says, doom to the shepherd leaders who butcher the scatter of my sheep. Doom, woe, the nation. Doom to the shepherd leaders who butcher and scatter the sheep. God's decree. So here is what God said to Israel. This is verse 2. Yee! This is what God said to Israel. God said to the shepherd leaders who missed my people. You have scattered my sheep. I'm reading the message Bible. Verse 2. You've driven them off. You, have, you haven't kept your eye on them. Well, let me tell you. I'm keeping my eye on you. God said to me tonight. I preached it before. I preached it before. God said, go back and get it. And I'm some things he said in that season that are different for this season. He said, um, go, go, go back and get it. Tonight we're gonna talk about poison by the pulpit. <laughs> uh, I remember reaching out to, to my uh to my uh, one of my friends tonight, and I told her, I said, sis, this is what I'm preaching. And she made the statement, you know, just let's play it. And she said, they're gonna they're gonna shut your page down. Listen, I, I I'm not concerned. I'm I'm called obey God. Now I, I want I want to use. I want to use, uh, to give you reference tonight, what God is about to do. But I wanna, I wanna break down a little bit. Those of you that, that got time set with me, uh, I'm not rushing tonight, I'm gonna obey God, take my time and give you what he got. But those of you that are spectators that are sitting on the borders and on the walls, you know, do what you do. But those who wanna come in and be a part of what God is doing, God bless your heart and all your parts tonight. Uh, the pulpit is a raised platform or lecture in a church. This is the definition of pulpit or chapel from which the preacher delivers a sermon or instructions. Poison is a substance that is capable of causing illness or death or living organism. Uh, a substance that is capable of causing illness or death of a living organism. Organism, can I talk to you tonight? So I'm going to flip the definitions and say a poison that is capable of, of causing an illness or death of a living organism by a raised platform or lecture in the church or chapel from which the preacher delivers a sermon or instructions. Let's go to work. Uh, the pulpit, the center of the room, the fire starter. The place of authority, the protocol, the order establisher, the master of the house, naturally, the leadership, the guidance, the the, the example, the past, the starter, and the accessibility of the church, the pulpit. In the pulpit is the influencer, teacher the reacher, the instructor, the environment center, the father, the mother, the midwife, the relatable one. There's a weight behind the pulpit. Can I talk to you tonight? There's a strong responsibility the pulpit holds. Every, uh, every part of the pulpit should be bold enough, worthy enough, stable enough, anointed enough for 
the pulpit. I'm not talking about the physical thing that you sit on mm, or stand behind. I'm talking about what we like to refer to in the, in the traditional church as the sacred desk. We like to refer to it as, as, as a sacred desk. You know, we say, well, don't come into the pulpit. We, you know, are looking in any kind of way. We, back in the day when I was in, when I was raised, I was, I was, I started preaching at 11. I was raised, uh, I was raised in the early nineties as a, a boy. Uh, don't do too much. Yes, I'm, I'm old, but I praise God for good looks. Uh, I was raised in the early nineties as a boy. And, um, and, and there were times when, when, when I started working, when I started working, I couldn't come to the pulpit without a jacket. I had to wear a jacket of some sort, even if I had a sweater vest on. I had to before I came to church, or why, or if I knew I was going to church, I needed to put a jacket in the car because I knew that I had to go to church and I was expected to sit in the pulpit, even if I had on my uniform for when I worked at a fast food restaurant. I could smell like fried hot dogs and, or not, uh, fried fried French fries or or, or, or hamburgers. But I had to make sure I had on a jacket. It was considered disrespectful if I didn't wear a jacket. And it was considered disrespectful in, in certain churches if I didn't wear a tie or if I wore a polo instead of a button down. Uh, I, I, I thought about that thing and I didn't even know it did, Elijah, but I know now. I said, wait a minute. Said, wait a minute. I was in a level of bondage then. I was trained to be respectful to a physical place, but not really identifying who I was in God. That's we're going to get there in a minute. We're living in a day when there is no reverence for the pulpit. The pulpit has been desecrated, God said. The sanctity of it has been disrespected. It has been said that with great power comes great responsibility. However, the problem is you got some folk who want the power but not the responsibility. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, they want the power but not the responsibility of the power. See, the power is for image when there is no anointing. Yeah. Glory to God. The, the, uh, too many gifted people are, are, are operating with the gifts and no oil, no anointing. They have no power, no oil, no anointing. She, uh, so my question is, what power are you operating with? Uh, what do you carry? Who are you called to? Who are you called? What are you called to do? And what's your assignment? In, uh, I, I don't understand. Grandma used to say, you're an empty wagon making a whole lot of noise. Yeah. You want the power. You want the power. Uh, you want to look like something is on the inside of you. Huh? You ever seen a pretty red wagon being pulled down the street? But it's a pretty red wagon only. Huh? But uh, we, 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 you, it, it's, it's easy to see a pretty red wagon. Huh? But when it's got some stuff in it, you say, that's a, a nice wagon. But what they got in it, you become more, you become more concerned about what's in the wagon rather than the wagon itself. Some, uh, the pulpit, the preacher, some of us, oh my God, some of you are empty wagons making noise. Uh, you know how to, you know, homiletics and, and hermeneutics. Oh my God. You know, though, I mean, for y'all that don't know what that is, that's the art of preaching. I mean, I'm going to break it down. Homiletics and hermeneutics, I don't teach you. You know how, that's, that's how you set up a message. You know, they tell you, you got to treat a, a message like an airplane. I've been, I've been doing this thing 30 years, Shay. I'd have been in tradition. I'd have been, I'd have been bound by tradition, but now I'm free from it. They tell you, you got to know how to set up a message, bro. They tell you, you got to know how to set up a message. You got to know how to treat it like a plane. You got to be, be able to pull it out on a runway. That's what they told me when I was younger, Chris. They say, you got to pull it out on a runway. Yeah. And you got to take that thing on the runway here. You got to warm it up a little bit. Huh? And you got to prepare it to grow. You got to prepare the engine to idle up. He said, this, the, the pastor told me, it's like a sermon. You can't give him too much at one time. No, so this is what, when you got proper homiletics uh, and hermeneutics, this is what it sounds like. So I'm supposed to be able to tell you this message. The way I started this message tonight, with the way I started tonight, when I gave you the word God gave me, that's considered improper homiletics or hermeneutics. You're not supposed to start with fire. You end with fire. Oh, God. They tell you, you got to set them up. You can't take them too fast. So they program you to make a sound. But don't, don't teach you to get in God's face for power. 
So, so, so I'm supposed to be able to, the Bible says, yeah, yeah. And then by the time I get to the part, I'm supposed to be able to tune up a little bit, Elijah, you know, and uh, turn your Bibles. I'm supposed to be able to take you up there. And then when I get up too high, when I get up higher than that, I'm supposed to be able to uh, get with the keyboard and we're supposed to have some chemistry so that I can go higher and higher. God told me that tonight the pulpit has been poisoned by tradition. Ritual has caused us to be blind. Rich them kushites, Shay. Uh, uh, rituals have caused us to be blind. We're most we're more concerned about what to wear on first Sunday than where our heart is with God. In the book of Isaiah tonight, God said they serve me with their lips. Uh, 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 oh God, help me tonight. But the hearts are far from me. Elijah, I call their hot lips. And a cold heart. Mm. Oh, that boy know he preaching. Huh. And you only said that because he can tune up. Huh. He ain't saying nothing. Huh. Ain't got no power. Huh. Ain't been ain't been taught nothing. Huh. Ain't teachable. Huh. Got a nasty attitude. Huh. Don't know nothing. He can let. Oh my God. Let's not talk about these folks that can prophesy, 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 but ain't got no word. Huh. Can't. Oh my God. Don't know how to hear God huh. for themselves. But we're we're set up. To listen to a certain sound in a certain way and call it anointed. Uh, I just moved from Arkansas a couple of years ago. And I remember often feeling some kind of way because I had to do a lot of riffs and riffs and runs that a lot of folk done what I sang. Yeah. So I was afraid to sing. Yeah. I was afraid to sing in public. No, so I was afraid to sing in my house because folk in my house could sing. And I had a riff and run like that. So I started to categorize myself as not a good singer. But let me tell you something. When you get free, yeah, oh my God, when you get free from people, I just want to sit around my house sometimes around here and I could break out a song, Elijah. And I surprised myself. I said, wait a minute. I didn't know I could hit that note. I didn't want to sound like that. Oh my God. Now I want to record because I allowed the cool sights. Shay. To tell me who I was and who I was supposed to be. Many, many people are gifted with no power. We have created an atmosphere in the church where it's easy to get paid and not have to work. <laughs> oh, it's easy to get paid and not have to work. A half sermon and a properly lying. I just like call false prophets, but then I an improperly lying based on what they saw about you on Facebook, and then and you hollering and screaming and showing and showing right there. But you got folk that are laying before God. My us true prophets that are laying before God, that are laying before God and believing God to hear God for you. Glory to God. Glory to God. We sitting here and we preaching our hearts out. Oh my God. And oh God. And we believe in God for words. We lay before God. But them folk that come to you, they sound good. They can entertain you. They can oh, they can make you jump. They can make you shout. They can holler. They can tell you some traditional. Something you've heard, give you a, you're gonna be blessed in five days' word, no details, but you are so into them. And you wonder why you're behind on your light bill. Why the baby need a pair of shoes, even got a light bill do, huh? Telephone disconnecting, you're waiting on your next paycheck because you're sawing into ground that ain't giving you nothing back. You've been poisoned by the pulpit. Meanwhile, when a real prophet comes, you struggle to bless him. See, the secret is a real prophet is fertile ground that produces not just, this is what God told me tonight. He said, uh, he said the real prophet is fertile ground that produces not just what's asked, but a continual harvest. You sow a seed. To get one blessing and to fake, oh my God, to these fake and phony, y'all. This is this is this is the pie church. I can say what I want to say. To these fake, phony, mamsy, pamsy, bull, oh my God, full of it. You sow into them for one blessing, but a real prophet will blow. Oh my God, God, because of the real, let me, you don't believe me. The Bible says in the Book of Kings that Elijah. Walked up to a king 
<laughs> and said it won't rain until I say so. And walked away from the nigga. And then came back. And that in three years and six months later, and caused God to act in the rain. But it did not rain for three years until the real prophet spoke. You spending your time with these backwards, oh, backwards, coming out of rebellion, don't want to hear nobody, mad as they pastor, ain't got no leadership. They, oh my God, they church whores because they go from one church to the other. And you're spending your time supporting them because they sound good. You like when they grab the ear. You like when they hold on to his robe. You like when they do all these tricks with his butt, when they put water all over the church and folk are to fall out. What is this got to do with God's power? With lives going to be changed. Where's your prayer life? Like, where's your fruit? Where's your fruit? What, what are you saying? That's producing something. Oh, God, let me tell you something. When I tell you that I've never, I've been, I've been preaching. I've been, I'm 40. I'll be 42 next month. I've been preaching 30 years. Come May 17th, will be my 30th year. My 30th year will be May 17th. I have never in my entire ministry, in my entire life, experienced God the way I experience him now. These folk, because I decided, because I decided that I got tired of trying to measure up with 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 John and, and Jimmy and, and Bishop so and so and Apostle such and such, these folks got all these titles and no fruit. <clears throat> I got tired of trying to measure up with people who had people following them, but people were going through. How you driving a Mercedes Benz and oh. And you you and then you fuss at your members because they can't get to church on time and they ain't got no transportation. You mad because they missed a service. They come here, you preach the same thing you said last week. Y'all don't get me tonight. I got tired of it. God, I can't do this. Uh, that by show, that by by. Hey. Uh, some of them same folk will lie. Oh my God, yeah. would lie until you got said something that God didn't say. Yeah. I got tired of it yeah. because of church folk. I almost took my own physical life. Mm. Glory to God. I got tired of seeing people say one thing and do another, traveling the same and, and all over the world, doing all, and ain't no fruit in your life. But I decided to move it. And put some extensions in my head, glory to God, and put a piston in my face. And they want to find out they calling me on our phone, trying to find out who I'm sleeping with. Uh, glory to God. Uh, lying still. Uh, but let me tell you something. I made up my mind. I decided to follow God with my life. Uh, if it means uh, giving up everything I got, uh, he's kept my mind. Uh, he's kept my heart. Uh, and I choose to get rid of the poison uh, or what the poor, poor bitch trying to do to me. Oh, ah, God, uh, I know who I am in God. Uh, I got tired of folk telling me uh, to wait on your calling uh, and God talking to me. Uh, wait on God. Uh, write the note to the bishop. Uh, let him hear him and, and, and judge him as God at night. Get out of here. Get delivered, you lying devil. <clears throat> I made up my mind. If I'm going to obey God, I ain't got no business trying to compare myself to man. Y'all don't hear me tonight. Scripture said, obey God rather than man. Here's the thing about how we line up. If you obey God, if the man is a man of God, if the woman is a woman of God, so we want, you know, I want to leave nobody out when I feel like I'm being sexist. If they're of God, you can obey God and it lines up with God in them. I should have to go through all these channels, listen to me, and all of these 
these, 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 these problems in my mind to get you to put a robe on my shoulder and, and a crown on my head to tell me who I am in God. You got more conditions on your wall, but no power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. You got degrees and recognitions, but no power. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, how you an apostle, bishop? Oh, oh my God. Ah, uh, how you a bishop? And you ain't got but one member. Ah, mm, best shot. I don't understand. We want titles, but we don't want the responsibility. People are dying. Uh, people are dying. I'm not talking about dying spiritually only. And you want to blame them for them not coming to church. No, they dying sitting in church. Oh, my God. You got those who need to be in the pulpit on the usher board. And those that are in the pulpit need to be on the usher board. But you, oh, God, because they give you more. Oh, God, because they sow more. You're going to use them more. And he want to speak over his people's lives and, and speak curses and say, God, God said stuff. I'm so sick of looking at social media and seeing folk on social media say, God said stuff he ain't said. You got, listen, I was reading uh, a couple of weeks ago, just randomly, uh, statistics. Do you know that in the year 2020, at the end of 2020, going into 2021, an average of 1,500 pastors shut the church down and walked away because of money, because of money problems, because of the pandemic. Yeah. Glory to God. Because the people lose us, lost their jobs because of the pandemic. They couldn't throw money into the church. Pastors walked away. Some of them even committed suicide because they couldn't keep up their lifestyle. Oh my God, help the people. <sighs> you want to support a half done job and get mad when you got half of a blessing and nothing at all. I tell my, my nephew all the time, if he was here, he'd tell you. I said, Chris, what is a half done job? He'll say, a job done, done at all. If you're not giving me all of God, you didn't give me none of God. Don't give me God's arm. They tell me to reach for the rest. What the word is in his mouth. Shut up. Mm, mm, mm. The problem is, we want the people to act delivered. We want to sit them at a process. Come to the altar. I got a word. God said A, B, C, D, F, G. Come to the altar. I got a word. God said A, B, C, D, F, G. Come to the altar. Let me back up. Got a word. Sow a seed. God said A, B, C, F, G. Yeah. Uh, come to the word, come to the altar. I got a word. God said, but yet they going home. Oh my God. Oh my God. Cause the Bible listen. Paul said, let me let me back, let me back up before I take what Paul said. Well, our church of our churches are full. You walk in the church, you can't get to a talk. You can't get to a song. Well, that's about to speak in the tongue. Don't know what they're saying. There's no interpretation. Everybody's speaking in different languages. You don't know what you got demons or angels speaking. But if, oh my, I felt that because it sounded good. I felt that because it looked good. But we're being poisoned slowly by tradition. We walk, we work so hard to be at church on time. But we have no relationship. We have no relationship. We have no Bible. We have no word. David said, "Has the word had I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God?" My question to you is, why you're still struggling with your self-esteem if you're called to preach? Because the scripture says to me, building myself upon my most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, and they don't mean, oh my God, they don't mean to sit up and speak in tongues and find out how many hours I can roll or what I can say to, to sound prolific or profound. What it means is, how much time have I spent with God? God, glory to God. Scripture says, blessed are the men that walk and not. 
in the council of the ungodly. Glory to God. Nor sinneth in the way, nor standeth in the way of sinner. Nor sinneth in the seat of the scoffer. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the law does he meditate day and night. It goes on to say, and he shall be like a tree planted by the water. What are you doing in private? Uh, uh, Oh, God, I thank you. What are you doing in private? What does your prayer life look like? Glory to God. What does your prayer look like? What does your life look like? You got people call, my God. They know your name in the earth. Glory to God. They know your name in the earth. You're popular in your pulpit. You're popular in your city. You're popular in the church that you're gonna affiliated with. But does God know your name? better. Does hell know your name? Because the Bible says that, that demons tremble at the name. The Bible goes on to say, at the name of Jesus. Every knee must bow. Every tongue confess, I hear you. Well, I ain't Jesus. Let me tell you what Jesus said. If I abide in you, and my word abide in you, ask what you will, and it should be given. Watch. It goes on to say, I am the true vine, and my father is a husband man. I am the vine, and you are the branches. God, in other words, if he is if he on the inside of me, he don't teach me how to walk. Teach me how to talk. Show me what to say. Tell me what to do. Where is your fruit? Where is, where is your fruit? Uh, you want titles? You got people calling you first assistant this, second assistant that. Chief Apostle, I just heard a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, never heard it in my life. What's an ascending apostle? I asked my brother, I said, bro, what is an ascending apostle? He said, I don't know, bro. I ain't never heard of it. I went to the Bible to look for it. I didn't find it in the Bible, but I found it about some fellowships. Oh my God. We want to add stuff together. Oh, he's a prophetic apostle. He's a, oh my God. I think my sister texted me the other day. Somebody said they're a prophetic consultant. I want to know what do these titles have to do? With your walk in God, huh? please somebody tell me. Huh? I know who I am in God. Huh? Oh, God. If you're a prophet, then prophesy truth. Seek the face of God. If you didn't hear God for you, if for me, you ought to be able to hear God for you. I'm going through a process now. My brother and I, there's a lot of things God tells us to do. Glory to God. We got to the point we learned not to question God. And everything God tells us, everything from a current event to a catastrophic event to what's going to happen tomorrow, it comes to pass. Let me tell you something. We we on the phone with folk and feeling in pain. And we prayed away. Let me tell you something. We're going to spend time with God. Let me tell you something. We're going to walk in. We walk in oracles of God. Glory to God. Let me tell you something. I don't care what you say about me. There's fruit on my life. We're so busy trying to impress people with clothes. Impress them. Glory to God. We're so busy. <clears throat> We're so busy trying to make the complications. Mm. Uh, we're so busy uh, sending revivals. Uh, glory to God. Uh, if you notice tonight on purpose, uh, I didn't put on my cash app on my title. Uh, I told my brother Chris, uh, I said, bro, I don't want to do that no more. Uh, let me tell you something. They're going to sow. They're going to sow. Glory to God. Uh, I'm so tired of these folk. Uh, get on Facebook. Uh, get on social media. Uh, glory to God. I compete with other pastors. Play, uh, oh my God. Play uh, tic tac toe uh, or ping pong with people. Uh, you calling people uh, that you calling the folk that's attached to them. Uh, they try to come here, you preach and sow a seed, uh, and then you call the folk that attached them to me. Uh, oh my God. Uh, when you see me go live, uh, you go live. Uh, oh my God. Uh, I'm sick of it. Uh, I'm sick of it. Uh, you dressed up nice, uh, but you're a mess. Oh God. Uh, from head to toe, you're sharp as hell, uh, but you're going to hell. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't understand. I don't understand. He's sharp from head to toe. Does spend a thousand dollars on one outfit for a media church. But the guy next door to you is hungry. It's shy. I don't understand. I don't understand. 
I don't get it. I don't understand. I begin to tell God. I said, God, show me. Show me tonight what you want me to say. He said, he said, God, he said, tell the people. Uh, there's poison uh, in the shepherd's house. Uh, I said, what do you mean, God? Uh, he said, tell the people tonight uh, that as long as uh, they keep being addicted to, to poison, uh, they become, oh my God, uh, it's like a drug addict tonight. Uh, you don't even know uh, you're addicted to poison. Uh, you're attracted uh, to the high. Uh, God said, so many folk uh, are getting high. Uh, I didn't expect a lot of pastors to be here tonight because uh, they don't want to hear the truth. Uh, it's all right. Uh, I'm going to obey God. Uh, so my God, it's like getting attached or addicted to drugs. Yo, my God, you taste it and you like the high of it. And because the high makes you feel good, you keep going back for it. But watch this. As long as you're high, you're still hungry. And you got to keep going back and getting high. And every time you're getting high, you're being lifted, but you're not being fed. Oh, God. You ever, oh, my God. You're getting high. You're hungry. But there's not enough food to feed you. Oh, my God. And when the high wears off, when there is no high, you have no appetite. Can I tell you what God said tonight? And when there's no appetite, the only way to eat again, you've got to get high. Glory to God. There's the folk that are addicted to the poison of the pulpit. Glory to God. If it don't sound good, it don't look good. If it don't, oh, my God. If it don't look the part. Glory to God. We've got folk that are tell you, if you don't wear a collar, you can't come in here. You can't wear purple on a certain Sunday in front of the bishop because they consider this disrespectful. Glory to God. Can you please tell me what the Bible says? Where is it in the Bible? You got to get back to the place of the Bible. Glory to God. Because David said the best. His words are left to my feet and a ladder to my path. I heard God tonight say, I'm going to read you my paper. Oh, God. God told me tonight, he says, you've been dealing with almost situations that said, Shay, that have trained you to be in bondage. And you don't even know you bound. Because the main people say you look good. <laughs> because somebody called your name. You don't even know you bound. Yeah. God said, you don't even know you bound because the main people told you you look good. The ones with, with a good name. Yeah. The ones with a title. The ones with full pockets said to you, good job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because they know your name. Yeah. yeah. You say I'm doing well. Because they call your name. You feel like you've done something. Because they tell you you're somebody. You feel like you're in good setting with God. But you don't even know you're bound. Glory to God. You're faithful to the church. You've been in there 20 years. 10 years and 5 years. Oh my God. Some of you are there from the foundation. Oh my God. And everybody in church know your name. You can sing them under a pew. You got a good sound when you do praise and worship. You got a good sound when you preach. You got a good sound when you're moving forward. Glory to God. You know what to say. They get the crowd moving. And they say you're anointed. But you don't even know you're bound. You're, oh my God. You don't even even know you're bound. But I heard God tonight say, if you're willing to be obedient, glory to God. And hear the word of God. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive the sins and heal the land. Uh, then God says tonight, uh, he said, seek ye first uh, the kingdom of God uh, and uh, his righteousness uh, and all these other things uh, shall uh, be added unto you. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, you wonder where you're going. Oh, uh, you're praying about what's being added. Uh, but I got a question tonight. Uh, what are you seeking? Uh, oh, oh, God. Uh, you upset because a preacher uh, didn't call your name and prophesy. Uh, you're upset because a pastor uh, don't act like don't act like you like you. They don't act like they know you. Oh my God. You sit on the front row where the color of the Sunday. And 
that. You want them to call your name. And when they don't recognize you, you go home and cry. But I have a question tonight. I want to know you, oh my God. You're looking for what's added. But what are you seeking? What are you seeking? Uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Scripture says, and all these others shall be added unto thee. Let me tell you how God sets you up. He says, I would that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So many of us are in imbalance. <laughs> so many of us are in imbalance. There is no balance in our spiritual walk with God. There is no clarity. There is no word. Uh, prophecy is not accurate. Whew. Folk, look at your life and tell you God said something based on what they can physically see. Uh, but who's laboring before God for you? Rabbi, yeah. Who's laboring before God for you? Uh, who's on their face for you? Uh, here's another question. Uh, what if there is no one uh, else that can lay before God for you? Uh, what is your walk without? Uh, God said, delight yourself uh, in the Lord. Uh, and he's going to give you the desires of your heart tonight. What are you desiring from God? Ah, and what God gives you. I have a question tonight. What is it going to look like when he give it to you? If God gave you what you thought you could deserve, if he gave it to you right now, can he trust you with the most of it? Oh, my God. Can he give you everything and you do right by it? Or you're going to, oh, my God. Or the first thing you're going to do is go sow it. Oh, my God. Go sow it to a pastor or somebody who told you God said something halfway. Glory to God. But you got a prophet that you've been looking at behind your pastor's back. Glory to God. And because he prophesied that truth, it allowed with you. But he's not your pastor. So you're not going to sow it to him. But oh! Yeah. What are you seeking God for? What are you seeking God for? Inquiring minds want to know. Inquiring minds want to know tonight. I believe it was Prophetess Brandy Norwood, Elijah. They said almost doesn't count. Going to church won't save you. Big on time for Bible study won't save you. Making sure you got some good clergy kind of old. Don't make you anointed. Glory to God. Having your robe on. They call it your vestments, bro. You're having your vestments on. Your surplus. Glory to God. In your cassock. In your shawl. In your cross. In your tippet. Does that make you anointed? Glory to God. I'm here to tell you tonight that the anointing destroy the yokes. You are bound in the pulpit. Therefore, people in the pulpit that are gleaning from the pulpit, that are moving from the pulpit, are being bound to your preaching bondage into bondage and bondage is now continuously bound and now it's bound with something else because you're not delivered. You are preaching, prophesying, improperly, improperly lying. Woo! Uh, you're a mess. You're a mess. You're not saved. Salvation is not just confession. It's what God says. Salvation is not just confession. Salvation is example lived. I'm closing my book. <laughs> so we say, well, the Bible say, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, Lord Jesus, you're going to be saved. And we say that's all it is. Salvation is not just confession. Let's break this out. What is salvation? Salvation is to be saved from and put into safety. Some of us, some of them, because they ain't me, 
You want to tell other folk, you're wrong if you do this, you're wrong if you do that. But what you do, you hide. Oh, God. What you do, you hide. You hide. And then you say, don't y'all do that. So we, we live by the do as I say, but do, don't do as I do. Mentality. We live by do as I tell you to do, but don't do as I do. And so when folks see you going somewhere, you told them not to go. You mad because they left the church. Because God said to me tonight, and I'm done. Part two next Tuesday. God said to me tonight, too many people are trying to build churches and not people. They got a church full of men. They got a church full of, of members. When you go in there, oh my God, that choir is so anointed. Oh my God, that boy can sing. Oh my God, that you, that woman. But you don't know the anointing from a form of godliness. <laughs> Paul said, brother, my heart desire prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear the record that they have a zeal of God and not according to knowledge. So, is it safe to say that there's bondage there's bondage on them, but it's not seen because they're chains on them, but it's not seen because they're walking. In other words, they're dead, but haven't laid down yet. <laughs> Preaching, dead. Have the gift of prophecy, but not the office of a prophet. Y'all need to take my class. You take my class. You have the gift of prophecy. You prophesied one time and somebody called you a prophet. Now you don't know how to, you, you're not a prophet. You gave one word one time. Somebody told you it was prophet. So now you walk around telling people you're a prophet. Help me, Holy Ghost. And then you ask questions to paint a picture and call it prophecy. You got, you got kids, don't you? Yeah, okay, I see four kids. You got a girl, boy? Yeah, okay, I saw, I saw two boys. Uh, uh, you got two boys. You got, I see, uh, is that your daughter right there? Come here. You, you love your mama? Duh, it's my mama. Ain't no accuracy. They're digging to try to come out, and they tell you, God's the way to do it for y'all. It's called, come on, Elijah. It's called soothsaying. <laughs> Y'all need to take my class. That was for free. God is not pleased with the position of the pulpit. Part two next Tuesday. Part two, and a part, I was about to say the final part, but I don't even know if this will be it. Part two next Tuesday. Poison by the pulpit. Oh, God. God told me tonight in prayer, God said, I'm tired of the church as it is. He said, I'm sick of them as they are. And that's about the, and I've been saying it for weeks, those that follow me and know, there's about to be a major shift in the body of Christ. And we'll be a whole lot of folk crying and I shout. But you know, y'all, they don't want to hear me shake because you know, I got, I got piercings in my face and and get ready to color my hair, you know. And, and you know, I ain't, ain't popular with church. But I'm going to tell you something. I don't miss. There's about to be a paradigm shift. It's already taking place in the heavens. Willie, bro, we talked about this. It's already taking place in the heavens. It's about to move into the earth. When I tell you what's about to come on the earth, it's not going to make many of them happy. But those of us that are aligning with God, these false prophets, these lying wonders, whoo, I want to say something else. I got my safe face. I wish you would have cussed. 
these ninjas, these Kushites, these rat faced roaches, this is me, keep me from cussing. These folks that are lying on God, that are lying as God said something he didn't say. I'm telling you, damnation unto you. He just said it in Jeremiah. Whoa, doom. Message Bible said, doom be unto you. Doom means death. It is your death. You're lying on God and laying down. Ooh. Spirit of divination. The dark spirit of divination. It's about to be exposed to the capacity of what it is. Many churches that are open today, you are bound. But I don't care who gets mad about it. You better be careful how you come to my inbox. Because I tell you what you ain't going to do. You ain't going to come to me sideways. You better, you better ask intercessor, whatever her name was, such and such. That's who she is to me. Intercessor, such and such. I'll expose you and go off on you. And then rebuke you and tell you who God called me to and remind you who I am in God. There is doom. Some of you are bound by the spirit of divination. You've been lured and lied to. To bring money and your and, and your your substance and your possession to these liars. You sold the seed two years ago and you still waiting on it. But there are major prophets that have told you truth, that have spoken to your life, and you look past them. But these folks you trying to impress. They're a part of your local celebrity club. You keep putting your seed in them. It ain't no growth. You are lured by divination. I don't lie on God because he don't lie to me. You have been sucked in by liars and tradition and rituals. Some of you sing the same songs every Sunday. And you're chanting. You're chanting the same song, the same repeating repetition. You know who gonna preach? You know who gonna say this? You know who gonna oh, you know who gonna do this? You know who gonna if so and so shout, they gonna shout. God said tonight it is being exposed, and there's doom and damnation coming to the pulpit. It's a many of you are religious and not righteous. Paul said it best. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Heba, shitabaya. No, it's seed bigger for bread. I know you're going through right now, but are you the righteous? I often tell myself, all things work together for good. This is my favorite part, Shay. For them that love God, and to them that are called according to His purpose. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. To that love God and are called according to purpose. I said to myself, oh, Alan, are you, do you love God? Of course, my answer is yes. Are you called? Of course, my answer is yes. What well, is working for you good? Then it goes to watch this. It goes down later and says, For whom he foreknow, he predestined. And whom he predestined, he also qualified. And whom he qualified, he also justified. Let them keep lying. Let them keep talking. You don't even know the word. Bro just said it. You call Paul more than you Jesus. Yee! You know more about do this. You know more about the miracles Jesus did, but where are the miracles in your life? When the last time you laid hands on the sick and the recover? When we give an answer, Chris, when we answer, answer Shay, yesterday, and we didn't even touch. Yesterday. And before we got we got off the phone, sis was healed. That's called fruit. Shay says it all the time, and it sits in my spirit. We uh, the, no, I keep saying we because I'm a preacher, but the church, the pastors, these so-called preachers, right now. Are open, they're wounded, and they messed up on the inside. They're not healed. And you got blood coming across the pulpit. You're bleeding on people. And you wonder why they ain't delivered yet. I pray for them all the time. I pray for them all the time. And I understand why they made the altar. Because you ain't got no power. 
But when, when God is real, you say, Chris, talk about it now. You ain't got to be in the same room at a point of contact. I was on the phone with this two minutes, not even two minutes. And within five minutes, the three minutes added to the two, she was healed. She was healed. Because the power of God, when it's authentic, can go anywhere it needs to go. You so busy. Yeah, bye, bye, bye. Yeah, talk, talk, talk. Oh, oh, bye, bye, bye. You on the altar, beat folk up, they sweat, you sweat, they fucking, you fucking, ain't got no pepper no, no in your mouth, your breath stinking, and all your tongue's start with H. And ain't nobody healed. Ain't nobody healed. You still got ill, depressed mother sitting up in church testifying, God is good. My mother been, oh, mother still bowed by that. And oh my God, y'all got to take a class that I hear. I feel a shift. I feel a shift. Eat what you want. You're fat and anointed. I look back at some old videos. I said, God, I think you for giving me some sense. So I learned how to start eating different. I got some stuff I need to still cut off. But look at my old videos. I look like twice my size. Hollering, screaming to the top of my lungs, Jesus, and out of breath. Because I wasn't eating right. Uh, we, made, we made church about entertainment and recreation. It's like going to a concert every Sunday, every service. We're going to a concert. We want to be entertained, like going to a play. My God. Poison by the pulpit. Part two next Tuesday. Y'all don't miss it. Listen, um, a couple of announcements. I'm my prophesying to nobody tonight. God said I didn't have to. The word alone was prophetic. Y'all that want to sow, you can sow. Pass, pass, my cash app is pent. Um, cash app is pent. Um, you can sow to the pie church. Um, those of you that want to sow, you can sow whatever you want. But those of you who want to sow a particular seed that was asking, um, and then a couple of weeks ago, God told me, to ask those that will up until he says he says um stop this whole everything seed of 42 dollars um the number 42 is the number is the number of everything so those you want to so those everything seed of 42 dollars you can do so you can so um more than that if you want to or less than that just so you see i'm not even dealing with that uh i'm here to tell you tonight uh you guys need to take this prophetic class elijah's mental school of prophets is about to present for the first time okay for the first time, I will not be teaching this class again. Okay, I'll be teaching other classes, um, but um, this in this in, in its form. Okay, we, we're going to give you four weeks. Okay, eight classes. I mean, I'm sorry, four classes and four weeks. It'll be power packed. You're going to have eight different sections. Okay, it starts on on April the 10th, on Thursday, on Monday, April the 10th. Deadline to pay for the course. It's going to be April the 6th. I will not take a payment after April the 6th unless it's a major situation because I have to be able to set up the class. I don't want to rush. That that gives me, um, what, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It gives me four days. I mean, three days, okay? If I take a payment April the 6th, it's going to give me three days to get the emails, get the student, um, the Royal City together, and get all the information out so that you can have your information. Those of you that are coming to the class, you can have your information in a timely manner. I cannot afford to take anything at the last minute because if I do, if, 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 if I do we'll be all over the place. I'm going to tell you this. Those of you who are critical said trying to sit back, cross your legs, and I'm going to see. Do what you got to do. Because this class will be taught whether you in it or not. If it ain't nobody but me and one other person, I'm going to teach you the class. My brother is also an instructor. <coughs> My brother, Prophet Chris Jones, is also an instructor. Um, and um, we have we have been, um, he and I um, have been, I can go ahead and tell you now, because uh, it's out there that never can do nothing with it. Boy, bro, that's a bonus that came over this night. When I tell you, I feel like I just slapped the devil in the face. But um, we're, we've, we're, we're right now finishing up the textbook. Um, it is also going to be my second manuscript and bro, uh, my second book written and bro's first book written. So we're we're going to actually have a written manuscript, uh, a, a, written, a written book. So those who want to buy the book later, you can definitely do that. But those of you who are, who are taking the class, a part of your uh, your career, uh, a, a part of your uh, your credentials 
will be the actual book. Okay, this is where you're gonna be taking lessons from, and we're gonna send you. We're gonna give you deeper information about that later. But I will not send a link to you or information to you until your class is paid for. If you don't like my prices, look past me. You don't need my services. I am so tired. I am so tired of of, of allowing the enemy to make me feel bad because I know folks talking about me. I don't care. That's what I'm. That's the edited version. Of what I want to say. But listen to me, listen to me, y'all, this is an investment. I always say the greatest investment you make is the one you make in yourself, invest in yourself. We've been praying, we've been laboring, we've been up the last, um, then we've been up working and hearing God and getting gathering information to put inside these textbooks for you guys, because we want you to get what God has for you. This is a prelude. We're we'll getting ready to launch the School of Prophets in a couple of months. Uh, a fit, well, this is the official lunch of the School of Prophets, an unofficial official lunch of the School of Prophets because of the class. But we're going to officially launch the School of Prophets um, in a couple of months. And um, those of you who are taking this class, you'll get a certification. Um, then later, maybe some other things to do. And uh, we, we, we're going to work on all of that. Uh, but I'm telling y'all, you do not want to miss it. I am a, I am a, a former apostle. And yes, I'll be ordaining some people, licensing the people. And I, I, I ain't bound by no tradition. But we're going to do that in time to manner. But for me, I ain't with the folks that you're going to impress uh, because you got one word and you know two scriptures. You're going to be a prophet. If, in fact, you think you know, even if you feel like God has called you a prophet, even if you are walking in the prophetic and you need some enhancement, you need some knowledge, I'm here for you. I want to be able to be a blessing to you. Listen, that's all I have. Next Tuesday, Beyond Bible Basics, uh, Beyond Bible Basics, I'll be live on Saturday as well with the word on Saturday. Uh, on, on Saturday, I'll, I'll put up a flyer about that. Um, I'll be live on Saturday, but next Tuesday, beyond Bible basis, I'll be on part two of Poison by the Pulpit. God bless you tonight. I love you with the love of God. I pray the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. May He cause the sun to shine upon you and to give you peace. Good night.